Who here has heard of Shodan by show of hands? All right, keep them up. Good, you got that. Most of the room, uh, not all of the room. Uh, who's actually logged into a free account for Shodan? Uh, still a good part of the room. Who has a paid account to Shodan and has done something with it? I, got, I think I saw one hand. Like my paid account? <laughs> oh, so any, any account, like if you've done something with it. Okay, so we got about four or five. So this is probably about the right level of talk for this group. Um, I want to thank our sponsors before we get started. Uh, without them, we wouldn't have this awesome conference. So big hand to the sponsors. So when, you, when a lot of us think of the World Wide Web, uh, when a lot of us think of the internet, what we think of is the World Wide Web. But according to John Matherly, who created Shodan, the World Wide Web is only a small fraction of what is actually on the internet. It's only about 10% of the entire internet, and there's a bunch of other devices uh, that are connected in there. So my name is Aaron Blythe. Uh, I've been working in software for over 15 years. I started as a developer, uh, but I've always been that one that takes on the operations. Uh, years ago, I would be the one that had like extra machines on my desk. And I would run like Citrix Labs, I would run our build servers, um, I would like create a bunch of stuff. Um, and then from that, uh, I kind of got into Chef uh, years later. And we started um, like spinning up machines, which was super awesome. And so where this has taken me in my career is now I'm the lead organizer of the DevOps meetup, a monthly meetup in Kansas City. And uh, we're going to do our second conference, DevOps Days, in September. And it's pretty rad. I have a sheet for you. If you're interested, come see me after the talk. I did one semester of college in Australia. Um, I didn't go to class that much. <laughs> I did surf every day that I could for months. Um, I wasn't really very good. Uh, to be good, you have to surf for years. So you notice I didn't call myself a surfer, but I surfed every day. This is very similar to my relationship with security so far. Um, I wouldn't call myself a security expert, but it's something that I, I really lo uh, love and get into. I feel the same way uh, when I find something out in the security realm as I do uh, when I was surfing or when I figure out that thing, uh, whatever that may be in software or IT. You spend all this time like paddling out and all this work for that like epiphany, that few seconds when you come back in on that wave. Uh, Shodan was created by the self-described internet cartographer, uh, John Matherly. He conceived of the idea back in 2003 and worked on it um, uh, continually until it actually went live in 2009. Uh, you can find him on uh, Twitter as uh, Achillian. The easiest way to get started with Shodan is just to go to um, shodan.io. Uh, what Shodan does is it indexes all of the devices that are connected to the internet. So basically what we're working with is Google uh, for all the devices that are connected to the internet. Who here is familiar with Nmap? Quite a few people in the room. Um, it, yeah, it's that badass tool that uh, Trinity used in her hacking session in the Matrix. She actually used it correctly to hack the power grid and then there's that scene of the city uh, where she finds the vulnerable uh, SSH ser uh, server and everything starts shutting down. Um, in the movie, since it was a while ago, she uses uh, the SSH1 CRC32 exploit from 2001. Um, however, as cool as that may be, I'd warn against using Nmap unless you really know what you're doing. From the Nmap website, uh, it says, when properly used, Nmap helps protect your network from invaders. But when used improperly, Nmap can, in rare cases, get you sued, fired, expelled, jailed, or banned from your ISP. So you reduce your risk by reading the guide that they have. Damn! 
Shodan is not Nmap. When I first heard of Shodan, I have to admit that I was actually pretty scared. I was like, uh, knowing what I know about Nmap, this thing is gonna like, you know, crawl the whole internet. What am I doing? Am I kicking off a crawl everywhere? Am I gonna have my ISP coming down on me? It's not that at all. Just like with books, someone needs to organize that library of all the information. Shodan crawls all the internet IPs continually and randomly from uh, data centers that are around the world. So Shodan has data centers or um, co-location or, uh, um, or cloud type of places and they're, they're hitting all of the IPs. They're hitting them randomly um, throughout the world. So the basic unit that's returned from a device um, is a banner. So here we see the Apache server. This might be very familiar to a lot of people in IT. Um, you see that we get a 200. Um, we get the information that we would if we just went to a web page. Um, there's also uh, industrial control devices, and they'll um, send back banners that look more like this. Uh, it takes the banner and it decorates it with this metadata, things like the host name, the operating system, the actual geolocation of that device, and it puts that together and has that as part of the index, and the index is based uh, mostly on the IP address. So, of course, we get web servers, um, as, uh, but as we've discussed at the opening, that's only about 10% of the Internet. There's also databases, and we would expect that, that, that sometimes databases are connected directly to the internet so they can be called by web services. A lot of times you keep those back behind your firewall. Um, but there's also uh, this new explosion of internet of things. These are things like webcams, watches, uh, and a lot of other personal devices. So let's talk about internet of things real quick. Have you seen this one? Um, you leave your dog in this internet connected box outside of a, uh, of a, a business and uh, what happens when this thing gets unplugged? Or what happens when this thing can't connect to the internet? This is a terrible idea. This is horrible. There's also a drone on the market right now that picks up dog poop throughout the city. No shit. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's... <laughs> and also light on fire on somebody's uh, porch. Um, and then the, the, one of the other ones is industrial control systems. This one was the most interesting thing to me while I was researching this presentation. Uh, there are many pieces of complicated industrial uh, machinery out there. Before the internet, companies paid these highly trained workers to go out to where their equipment was, right? And so like if there was a problem at a water plant or uh, uh, any type of industrial control system, they would pay people and most of their time was spent in the car to get to the place. The internet comes out and what they do is they start having their devices phone in. And most of their service calls, they get this economy of scale by having the, inf the information in a centralized location so these highly trained people can sit in one location and not have to drive around and actually do a lot of the service. The unfortunate thing is they did a lot of this uh, before there was like a Linux or before there was a lot of standards uh, or the way that we understand REST currently. They did this on proprietary systems that they built themselves and um, the security for it isn't the best in the world. So now we'll jump into uh, Shodan. Uh, inside of Shodan, there is a report for Heartbleed. I hope it's still there. Um, and we're going to go to it. So if we go to reports, I'm going to command minus just a little bit. My account. Okay, 
just on the front page, if you scroll down, there's the sample report on Heartbleed. Um, so these are the devices that are vulnerable to Heartbleed um, throughout uh, the internet. So does, that, does anybody remember Heartbleed? So when we started branding uh, uh, exploits and giving them icons and names and all kinds of stuff, um, what's interesting is like we can see all of the different um, information about this in a very simple report. So the top countries, most of the Heartbleed uh, things that are out there are in the United States. The top services, uh, mostly it's HTTPS, but there are a host of other um, services that are running on the machines. Top organization, this is interesting, is Amazon.com. This is probably not the company, Amazon.com. It's probably people that have just spun up servers on AWS, right? Uh, mostly it's um, HTTP 1.1, which is good. Uh, people are not using as much of HTTP 1.0. Mostly it's Apache web servers. And we also see that mostly it is Apache 2.2, which is interesting to me. Uh, either people are not using uh, 2.4 as much, which is probably the current standard. Um, they're, st they're stuck in some way on 2.2 uh, and or um, the people that are on 2.4 are just more secure. Either one could be a possibility. Top domains we see uh, Amazon AWS again, SSL versions, and all kinds of good information. Mostly it's uh, the Linux kernel 3.x, which I was actually surprised with. That's good. People are running uh, later versions of Linux. Um, so this is directly from the book uh, by John Matherly, and the emphasis is mine, and I'm completely breaking all the rules of presentation by just throwing a bunch of uh, text up here for you, but I do think it's important, so I want to read this part to you. Um, note that the test crawlers only grab a small overflow to confirm the service is affected by Heartbleed, but it doesn't grab enough data to leak private keys. I was actually surprised by this. Shodan is actually trying to do the exploit to tell you whether or not you're susceptible to Heartbleed. I remember Heartbleed as being um, running a bunch of scripts against our servers where we just checked uh, OpenSSL version, right? And then we made an assumption that, oh, we need to upgrade that version. The, the servers that are listed here are actually the servers um, that are susceptible. He's actually done um, a small exploit, not enough to actually pull information down, but to show that they're uh, um, susceptible. So we can see the numbers when I started researching this talk. Someone write this down because we're going to compare it. Um, it's uh, 145. I took that report, which we're going to do here in a second, and I started drilling down, um, and we'll do that. Uh, but in Kansas City, when I drilled down to just Kansas City, 145 uh, boxes were susceptible. I did the same thing in Overland Park. Um, 195 boxes were susceptible. So when I go to this report, I simply click on uh, here. Actually, this number, 144,000, let's remember that and I'll go back to the original report because the original report was ran uh, in March 2016, and it said 237,000. So the number is coming down. Uh, we are getting, uh, as a community across the world, getting Heartbleed actually patched. So now we're actually using Shodan. Can you guys see that screen, or do I need to Command Plus in? You got, can't see? No. Nope. That's too far for what I want to show. So the way this is laid out is uh, th it's very similar to like if you're familiar with like solar uh, or like a different indexing type of stuff. There's a lot of different facets over here that I can um, drill down by and then my results are here. So each one of these are individual machines. So if I click on United States, 
then I'm just going to see the ones that are in the United States. I'm going to click on A City, New York is the one I'm choosing, which has 806. I'm going to click on it again. So, quick story. Years ago when I was in like college, we used Alta Vista. This is well, well before Google or whatever. I would always just like hit the button. I was like, if I hit it four times, then it all comes back faster, right? I didn't know anything about computers when I was in college. So Kansas City is down to 102 compared to the 145 that I uh, showed you earlier. <laughs> and Overland Park, I'm just happy the conference Wi-Fi is working. It, it, Slow is better than like, this demo would be terrible if I was just like, oh, dude, doesn't work at all. <laughs> See, I think I, if I hit enter again, it'll be better, right? Uh, 155. So if we go back, that's compared to 195. Let me switch my mirroring on my displays. Jump back into here. I'd like to think that I had a small part in that number going down. Uh, because when I started doing the research for this, I saw some of the companies that I knew people that worked at those companies. And I reached out to them and said, listen, you have stuff that like hackers probably know about that's open on the internet and open to Heartbleed. You should probably get this patched. No consulting fees. None of that. Uh, so... I just, it was the right thing to do, so. The next killer uh, uh, um, feature is maps. You only get this one in the paid version, and based on the time, I'm not actually going to drill down into this, but it is pretty cool to see if you just switch over to showed maps, you can see where the actual devices in your search are. Um, the query language looks similar to a query language that you may be familiar with. If you use the advanced features of Google or if you've ever used Solar, it looks sort of like that. Um, John Matterly seems kind of fine that this is uh, a little bit more technical than your normal typing into Google. I'm also fine with that because I think it, it, lowers, it raises the barrier to entry so that like not everybody can get into this. But as security professionals, we should probably... Um, understand how to do this, and then we should um, secure our machines. Um, so here we have, uh, I'm searching for the word Pat Apache, and then I'm city of San Francisco. So you use these name value pairs like country uh, of Germany, and that's how you get the search to go. Uh, some of you may be aware that Krebs on security was attacked last fall. This was a DDoS. Um, attack that was executed from many Internet of Things devices that had default um, or weak or um, hard-coded passwords. When, uh, when Krebs figured this out, he actually reported uh, the, he, that the source code to the botnet was released. And the, the problem is that like these devices are probably still out there and there's probably still things like this. What was actually used was a lot of um, DVRs in this particular case and a lot of Internet of Things type of stuff. So more recently, in March of this year, uh, there was a Vault 7 WikiLeak release detailing how the CIA performs electronic surveillance and cyber warfare. Uh, in these documents, it was made ever more obvious that Telnet is on by default on almost all Cisco devices, probably over 300. So by sending this malform CMP, uh, which is a cluster management protocol, this arbitrary code, it can be executed and you get full control of the machine. 
Cisco's response was turn off Telnet, right? Even though they shipped the device to you with Telnet turned on, their response is it's your responsibility to go in and turn off Telnet. And by all means, do that. Uh, I did a Shodan shirt, uh, search for the Cisco as the word. And as we talked about earlier, I just said port 23. Uh, and we can take a look at that search. How am I doing on time? We'll do that search at the end if we need to. But this is basically what comes back. There are a lot of devices um, that are Cisco devices. Um, actually, in this search, I say product colon Cisco. And that actually gives me an even better search. It's not just that Cisco was anywhere in the index. It's that the product was Cisco. If we do a Telnet search um, in general, not just on Cisco devices, there's 3.7 million devices out there with a Telnet port open to the internet. Seriously, use SSH, shut off Telnet. Like, uh, this is uh, ridiculous. So the original intent of Shodan was to do market research, which is a pretty good idea. The idea was um, that HP, Cisco, they're going to want to see all of their devices that are out there on the internet that are actually connected and so they can get data back so they can know like who they need to sell to, um, who's our, how are they using the devices, how can we fix these in the future, which is a pretty awesome idea. So here I just did simple searches for Cisco and HP and saw that, um, you know, these are market leaders. They've got millions of uh, devices connected directly to the Internet. Um, Shodan also grabs an image from the devices in cases that warrant it. This could be a bad idea, but I'm going to just YOLO click uh, this and we'll see what happens. <laughs> right? Uh, let's go. And I apologize again for the fumbling of switching back and forth, but we're going to deal with it. Wow, so we can see a lot of parking lots out there in the world. Um, okay, so now I'm going to search for Windows, right? Let's see what we get. What? That has changed. That used to, the joke there was, it used to show like security cams of like Windows and stuff. <laughs> what you actually want to search for is remote desktop. So, if your remote desktops are out there on the internet, uh, you know, open then we've, we can see this. Uh, for an attacker, this can be used to ensure not just only is that, uh, is that port open for uh, RCP, but this is in fact a, a Windows machine, so uh, my crawler, my whatever you have you, is going to go, uh, go try to do what it's going to do. Someone was asking about free version. Uh, limitations of the free version. You can go no more than five pages deep on any search and you have no maps. I think there are other things that you may not get if you're just using the free version. However, you do get quite a bit. So if you, I think you have to create an account. You don't have to give them money. You have to give them a valid email address. Um, people in this room probably know many ways to use valid email addresses that uh, don't connect to themselves. But, I think that it's a solid service, so I just gave it my real email address and I've actually purchased um, uh, the, the paid account. My understanding is it's lifetime. Oh, wait, we'll probably go into that in a second. Cost for an individual. Uh, you can gain full access for $49. Uh, 
Uh, I believe last year they had some kind of um, Black Friday deal, and a lot of people got it for either five or ten. Um, I think it's a good enough service that I was happy to give them forty-nine dollars. I think that um, many other people could run a service like this and be nefarious. I think this is on the up and up, and uh, worth it for me to give um, some of my money to this service. So I went ahead and paid full price. It's lifetime, I, I believe. Uh, as far as I know, as long as the service is up, like if you paid for it, you get to continue to use it. Uh, enterprise access would allow you to download, stream, or even have a monthly hard drive delivery of the data to um, your place of business. Uh, this would also mean unlimited API access for your organization. I don't know that the API access is actually unlimited on the personal one. I think that it's metered and you can buy more credits. So you can't um, just like completely pummel it. Um, and Shodan's marketing material boasts that this is already used by 56 of the Fortune 100 uh, companies and thousands of universities. So the question you're probably asking yourself, is my device on Shodan? Currently the answer is likely no. The reason is routers and IPv4. However, when we get to IPv6 and everything's individually addressed, we'll see what happens. Um, your router, possibly. Would you like to check if your device is on Shodan? Uh, you can um, go to this and search. I did this and allowed the search in my browser. You can actually do a deep scan. I was not going to invite these. I'm sure they're awesome people. I just didn't want them to come into my network, uh, so I didn't click on the deep scan. There's also a browser plugin. Uh, the last talk I did was at B-Sides KC, and I noticed that the um, web page that they were running had more than just uh, port 80 and 443 open. Um, it actually had uh, a few other ones. But the plugin, you put it right into Chrome, and then you can see whatever site you're on. Uh, the information that's in that index for Shodan. I strongly recommend watching John Matherly talk about this because he created it. And he's a much better speaker than me. And uh, he knows what he's talking about. I think this is a super cool tool, so I'm trying to spread the word. But I, just, I think you should check out um, his recent talks uh, at the National Cyber Summit and um, NetExplo. There is a book that John Matherly wrote uh, that you can get on LeanPub. Uh, I think the suggested is $4.99, the minimum. You can get it for $0.99, cents or you can be like me, and I just paid the maximum $10 uh, because why not? Like, super awesome tool. Now for the disclaimer. Um, uh, I've been incredibly tempted myself to click on stuff. You get these search results, right? I was like, whoa, we should, uh, we should click on that because this person left this open to the internet. I want you to use this information for positive purposes. Um, accessing or attempting to access someone else's device can definitely be punishable by law. And I tell you these things that I've told you so far today so you can protect your own assets, not so you can go out and hack into other people's assets. Because you know what? You may think you're opening a connection to some dummy on the internet who left open something, but you might be very well clicking on a honeypot, and you might be actually falling into a trap of someone who's much smarter than you. Um, so uh, while, it, while it does seem open and it's sitting there in Shodan, um, uh, just be careful. Uh, there's a really good section on serial uniqueness in the Shodan book. And I recommend that you take uh, a look at that. Uh, using serial uniqueness, uh, you can actually start to figure out which things on the internet are honeypots. So if you think that like someone at your business has actually started to either click or open something or, or opened a connection with somebody, you can actually use the data that's in Shodan to um, figure out where you just exposed yourself to. So it's really good data to use um, for your, your post-mortem type of stuff if something bad happens. Um, help me get better. 
Uh, you can find me at AaronBlythe.org. Uh, I think most of my talks are up there in the presentation uh, thing, or you can connect. Uh, there's links to connect to me on LinkedIn or Twitter, or just send me an email, any of those type of things. I love having conversations about this stuff. Uh, so, Rad, that's all I got. Can I go? I'm good. Do I have five minutes for questions if there are any? Oh, does anybody have questions? Not a question, but another comment. One plug for the paid version. If you use um, Recon MG from Tim Tomes, there's a module, but you have to have a paid version to get the API key. That's fantastic. What's the legality with actually actually exporting that perfectly, just you know, showing and doing it to show that it's there and actually available to be exporting? So they ran kind of a low level export. That's an excellent question. I, I really don't know uh, what that is. Uh, I think that in spaces like this, if you're... Oh, repeat the question. What's the legality of um, uh, exploiting that little bit to see if uh, it's vulnerable to heart bleed? I, I'm not a lawyer, so I, I have no idea. Um, but I think in cases like this, uh, I think that this is a very positive service that's out there. And being upfront, like if you're going to be uh, innovative and create things like this, uh, and your your desire is to do good, then you be upfront. And like it was it was exposed, like that this is this is what we're trying to do. So I think that's the best way to deal with stuff like that. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah it's a, it, that was a non-answer. Like it was the I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. What the images? Did you see the? Um, oh, you mean the actual desktop? One of those tweets from my garage. <laughs> Was it? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but you're gonna check real quick, right? I'll pull that back up. That was fun. The the voyeur in all of you was like, what? You can do what with this? Um, yeah, webcams. Uh, oh, there's kids sleeping. Um, yeah, I, I'm probably an idiot for bringing this up. In a live presentation, you don't know what's. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it just grabs an image, and and what it does is um, it, there's uh, logic in there that says if it's this particular port, it's most likely a webcam. So I'm uh, I'm going to actually grab an image. It also. sending it out and you're copying it, you're not invading or doing anything to the system. So I don't think that just getting a few bits and proving that the exploit is there is illegal anymore. In, in my understanding, this is probably, I'm not good with video cameras, it's probably RTP, but it's probably coming over HTTPS, right? That's how the internet works. You make a request, the request is sent back to you by the server. So I, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. Like the people have People have set this up either through um, intention or ignorance, have set it up in such a way that anybody can make this request and get this information back. So, uh, I. Instacam.org is very similar, where it's all cameras. That makes sense because you're receiving. It's the submitting and something in to the system that makes Yeah. Right. These ones here? Yeah. I have no idea. Uh, they could be, or they could, like, it doesn't. If, if it's coming from port 80, it's most likely HTTP. If it's coming from port 443. So I think we can click on, uh, let's, let's see. I think I can click on one of these. 
and then we'll get the Shodan result for it. Um, so this is where it's located in the world. Um, port 21 is open, port 23, port 81, and it's HTTP 1.0. So this particular one is unencrypted, most likely. I don't know, you could be running encryption on that port. No cache. I don't know, does anybody read this stuff fast to know? I mean, so it's really, it could be encrypted or not encrypted. It's basic web traffic, right? So like it, it gets decrypted by the browser or the, the client, right? So like when it comes back to their, their thing, they decrypt it. Good question. Any other questions? All right, that's my time.